live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering NAB 2017, brought to you by HGST. Welcome back to the NAB Show. Lisa Martin here with Jeff Frick. We have had an amazing day one, wrapping up the end of a really informative day, Jeff. I don't know about you, but the, just the, the theme of the NAB conference this year being the, the Met Effect, this right, convergence right. of media, uh, entertainment technology, and so many different types of technology was really uh, very exciting. So much innovation going on, so much opportunity, and, and we've talked to a variety of guests today from those who are, are um, involved in film and broadcast and lots of different um, sectors to sports, broadcasting and really just a very, very exciting, kind of like we're at this tipping point of what's going right, to happen next. Right, right. So the themes that we see over and over continue, you know, all about democratization of data, all about using data to make your decisions. Even within storytelling, you want to use data, and there is data that um, will correlate to certain types of success and not success. A really interesting conversation around how do you build a movie trailer, and what percentage of the trailer has the star in it or not, and depending on the star, and and or who you're targeting with that particular trailer, the answer to that question is different. So, you know, it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of interest. It, then how cloud has democratized all this horsepower that's now available to basically anyone if they can scramble up the budget, they can apply the same kind of massive compute power to rendering and other processes as what was exclusive to just the, the biggest shops before. So, it's just interesting how it continues to be the same themes over and over, uh, and it's impacting this media and entertainment industry in the same ways it's impacting travel and healthcare, transportation, IT, everything else. Exactly. You talked about um, before the kind of data-driven decisions, and if, as we look at streaming services like with Netflix, they've got the advantage of knowing everything. And I think we talked about this in the open this morning, everything about us. One of the things that, that I learned today was they have that advantage, but one of the things that they couldn't do until they started creating their own content was change content. You look at the film industry which and, and filmmakers and writers who have historically, it's been a very qualitative, intuition-based um, process where now they've got data at their power that they can extract more value from and make data-driven decisions. And we're saying to your point, across industries that kind of bringing in uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, leveraging data science to help make decisions that really um, can sort of level the playing field for, like you said, some of the big uh, studios that have the money for real-time cloud rendering or had it a while ago to now some of the smaller ones that can do that and, and achieve similar economies of scale that they wouldn't have been able to do on their own. Right. The other big trend that we see over and over, Lisa, is this idea where before, data wasn't always considered an asset. That might be hard to, for people to fathom that are kind of recent to this world where of course data is an asset. No, data was a liability. It was expensive. I think in the, you're one of your interviews, they didn't keep dailies because right. dailies were expensive. They didn't keep this stuff. And it's, what's interesting in the context of film is you know, if a particular film becomes a really important piece of work, you know, you want to treasure it, you want to keep it. You know, we had Sundance on and talking about archiving all this fantastic um, material, artwork, cinema, whatever you want to call it. So the fact now that in this industry too, because uh, storage is less expensive, but more importantly, they see the value of the data exceeds the cost of storing it. Now they just want more storage, more storage, more storage, because you don't want to delete anything, and of course it's all generated digitally today in this industry. Right, that's a great point that you brought up where we were talking with uh, the VP of Marketing at HGST, who was talking with uh, one of the major studios. They filmed this scene that was beautifully shot for, I think it was a couple hundred extras in the scene, looked back and then thought, you know what, we should have filmed that for virtual reality. And because they didn't save the dailies previously, they had to recreate the entire thing. So to your point of looking at the value of data, it's now also, because you're right, the, the economies of, of storage are going down and there's a lot of technologies, flash, hybrid, that are really enabling it to be uh, readily available. But it's also this data that's now valuable is creating new opportunities, it's generating new revenue streams, and it's something that companies like Netflix or even broadcast television can utilize to find different ways of 
providing relevant content to their viewers. Right, right, and as you said, things to learn. I learned today that, you know, there's so many versions of a particular media asset that are created for sensitivities that are you know, around a particular country, obviously now for virtual reality, for all types of different playback mechanisms. So they need to keep everything and create many permutations of everything. And so again, data makes possible, absolutely. And, you know, the, and there's a whole nother round coming, right? Which is all around the analysis of the frame in the video to get the better metadata. And that's just a whole nother rash of, of uh, improvement that's coming down the line. We heard a number of people today talk about all the metadata, and how important the metadata is to capture along the process, but it's going to get even deeper in terms of the analysis of the frame level for these pictures, exposing that out uh, to other kind of machine learning algorithms, search, et cetera so that it becomes an even better world for the consumer to find, consume, and share that which is of interest to them. Absolutely. One of the things that I find interesting is how much content is being created by people that probably don't really realize they're creating the content. Everyone's connected. We talked about, um, we had a, the independent security evaluator, Ted Harrington, on the program today who was talking about uh, security, not just in the context of media and entertainment, but the fact that it's a very relevant issue. We know it as an issue in lots of other industries. He was actually saying that it is, the media and entertainment industry is actually pretty good where security, cyber security is, is concerned, uh, securing connected devices, where it seems to me that they could be potentially um, sharing some best practices with some of the other industries that might still think of security as a nice to have. Right, right, no, and, and we saw it with, with Sony, they got, they got hacked early, I guess it's been years now, time flies. Um, so security is very important, but obviously, you know, the, the, the hacking of DVDs back in the day, which was a big deal, but now it's all, it's all digital. And you know, the windows to make money on these for the big releases at the big moments is relatively short. It's a super competitive business. So security is definitely a, a very big issue. So it's exciting. The, the other thing that's just kind of interesting is the democratization, as we talked about with the power of all these tools. The thing that scares me a little bit, Lisa, and I see this one at a lot of big budget movies, is sometimes I think the tech gets in the way of the storytelling. And I think you know, it's a crutch to lean on cool special effects and, and cool stuff and, and forget about it. You have to tell a story to make it interesting. And if you don't tell a story, it's not. And, and we talked on one of the interviews today about you know, even like commercials, right? And we've seen commercials. You know, Coke hasn't advertised brown sugar water for a very, very long time. It's all about the emotion of the Coca-Cola. It's about the, you know, being part of a community. And you know, to start to use actual data to drive the narratives in the commercials, when you're not trying to sell a, a billion dollar movie, you're trying to sell an entire factory production run of a new automobile stakes go even higher, your touch points are even lower. So again, this whole theme over and over, data-driven decisions based on AI, based on measuring the right things, based on you know, knowing your consumer better because you have to or else they'll just swipe to some other piece exactly. of content. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I think those were the, the very pervasive themes that we, that we saw here. Uh, but I think there's just tremendous opportunity. It's almost like we're at the tipping point. We had um, Kevin Bailey, on as well from Atomic, uh, and, Atomic Fiction. and uh, Conductor, and he was saying six years ago when uh, he had this hunch on cloud where to try to do rendering in real time for big movies like Deadpool, for example, The Walk, one of my favorite movies, would take a tremendous amount of time. And he said, you know, to be able to do this with the speed that we need and the agility and flexibility of fixed solution is, is not optimal. So he was really kind of leading edge in that space and now we're seeing um, technology is pervasive, but, but you're right, there can be um, an overuse of it. So it's really about finding this balance. So I think we had a great spectrum of guests on the show today that really showed us all of the different facets and then we probably just scratched the surface, right? Oh, definitely. So that you have, <laughs> that, that you can look through to really understand what makes good content emotional, what makes it successful and what enables the audience to be in that control of this data that is democratized all over the place. Yeah, to get emotionally involved. There's, a, there's, there's some great lines, you know. It's all about emotion and connecting and in, in a hyper-competitive world for attention. It's really an attention competition these days. Yeah, it's no, much harder point. than it's ever been. It is. All right, yeah. well we got two more days. We do. All right. 
So get a good night's sleep, I'll get a good night's sleep, you should get a good night's sleep. We'll be back for, uh, for day two at NAB 2017 with Lisa Martin, I'm Jeff Frick, checking out with theCUBE. We'll see you tomorrow, thanks for watching.